So this is my pedal board. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the signal chain and then I'll give some examples of what they all sound like. The microphone that I use is a Vega Music intro mic and it has its own preamp. So I can get a quarter inch into the MXR smart gate directly from the intro mic. In this case, I'm using it with my wireless system. So it goes out of the wireless into the smart gate. From the smart gate, it goes into a Sonus G2M audio to MIDI converter. And then from there into the Boss ES5. The first loop of the ES5 has the Source Audio C4. The second loop has the Eventide Pitch Factor. The third loop is a Qtron into a One Control Mosquito Blender. The fourth loop goes to the Zoya. Then I go out of the ES5 into this noise gate, which then goes into a TC flashback delay, which I actually have always on. It's a slapback setting that I have, one of their tone prints. And from the delay into the TC Hall of Fame reverb, which I also leave always on. And then from the Hall of Fame reverb into a radial Pro 48 Active DI, which is underneath the smart gate. I use the Active DI because I feel like it gives me a, a healthier signal to send to front of house. Uh, I have a passive DI in case there's an issue with using Phantom Power, but I found that the Active DI really works well, especially since the signal is pretty quiet coming out of the board. Some people use an EQ, but honestly, after getting the intro mic, uh, I don't really need to, to change the sound because it's my sound. It's, it's me. And for those of you that aren't uh, familiar with the intro mic, the microphone is between the mouthpiece and the neck. So it's really, it's right there at the source of your sound and it's super clean and I wouldn't want to EQ it anyway. So for the first loop is the C4. One of the things that I like to use the C4 as is a way of getting a different kind of sound, a non-horn sound, because the pitch checking on it is so great. So the first sound I'm going to demonstrate is this distorted guitar uh, lead type of sound. And what happens is my audio goes into the C4, it listens to what pitch I'm playing, and then it outputs this distorted guitar lead sound. Here it is. The other kind of sound that I use on the C4 is a synth sound. So the C4 has oscillators, it has a distortion section, it has a filter section, and it has some modulation options like LFOs. So in this sound, my audio is going into the C4, it's listening to track the pitch, and then the output is this uh, saw wave based synth sound. Here it is. So the next pedal that I want to touch on is how I use the Eventide Pitch Factor. You can see lots of examples of this online. Uh, I use a couple different sounds out of it. One is a sound uh, in fourths. So it's my sound, a fourth above my sound, and a fourth below my sound. So if I'm playing a C, it's also putting out an F above and a G below. Here's what the fourths patch sounds like. I also use a sus patch, and this sus patch combines the pitch factor with the C4. So what happens is, using the ES5, I'm actually able to put these pedals in parallel. And what I get out of that is the pitch factor plays my sound, a fourth below, and a fifth below. And at the same time, the C4 is playing my sound an octave below. So I have my note, I have 
a fourth below, a fifth below, and then an octave below. So if it was pitches, it would be C, then G, then F, and then C below. And it's a real wacky sound. It's a lot of fun. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> The third loop I want to talk about is the Qtron going into the blender here. So I've experimented with using compressors and different orders, things in the Qtron's effects loop. And what I found works best for me is there's two knobs here on the blender. One is for the dry signal and one is for the affected, affected signal. In this case, the Qtron is the affected signal. So I leave the dry signal all the way up and I call in the Qtron sound about 60 to 70 percent. And what I found is that it helps mediate some of the volume boost that you get from the Qtron. Uh, and the wah sound is part of your, your, your dry sound. It's not the only sound. And I feel like it really helps enhance what you're doing as opposed to completely changing the tone, right? So here's what the wah sounds like. <laughs> So the fourth loop is the Zoya, and Zoya does some really cool stuff. So one of the things that I use the Zoya for is I will get MIDI information from the G2M audio to MIDI converter, and it sends pitch data, it sends velocity data, and it actually sends breath controller uh, CC number two data as well. And I can get all that into the Zoya without having to rely on the Zoya's pitch tracking. So this first patch is a synth that plays my sound. It has a synth up an octave, a synth up a sixth, and it also has this kind of random bass line. It's pretty wacky. Here it is. the Zoya for is for delays. And what I really like is that I can use this left stomp switch as a tap tempo. And I have three delays always uh, within reach. I have an eighth note delay, I have a dotted eighth note delay, and I have a quarter note triplet delay. So what I use with those delays is this expression pedal as well. And I can call in more of the delay sound or less of the delay sound based on how far the expression pedal is depressed. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Just a quick side note, one of the things I really like about the ES5 is what it does with the expression pedal. So this expression pedal goes into the ES5 and the ES5 can translate the expression pedal as CC, MIDI CCs. So what I can do is this expression pedal can send CCs to the C4, it can send CCs to the pitch factor, and it can send MIDI CC to the Zoya as well. And it can do that individually, it can do all three at the same time. And I can also translate exactly how much down or how much up 
uh, affects them. So it's a really powerful tool by combining the expression pedal with the ES5. So one of the things I'm going to show now is how I combine some of the sounds. So I'm going to take that distorted lead sound from the C4, and it, it's going to go into one of the delays that I've set up in the Zoya. Here's what that sounds like. So I don't know if you've noticed, but this number one pedal is always red. And that's because I've dedicated this number one switch to clicking the wah in and out no matter what patch I'm on. So I always have wah available. So that's a really nice thing to have, especially if I always want to change up my sound. It's always there. It's always available. Uh, here's what it is like with the wah. One of the other things that I always have available is this number five, which is always my dry sound. And what I can also do is when I click it a second time, it kicks in the tuner on the pitch factor. That also serves as a mute. So I always have my dry sound. I always have a mute uh, at least a click or two away. And the other nice way that I have it set up is that the red light is on for number five and the red light is on for number one when it's not engaged, right? So the idea is like red, stop, red, not working. So just from looking at the board, I know whether or not the pedal, in this case, the wah for number one or the tuner for number five, a mute essentially is engaged. So the way I have the bank set up is I use the the bank switch is a bank up. I use the mute switch. I've reassigned that to be bank down since I have my double click to mute my sound instead. And my banks are a horn section bank of horn section sounds, a transposed pitch bank with the sus sound, the fourth sound, and an octave down sound, a lead sounds bank, a delay bank, and a lead plus delay bank. So those are the five banks that I currently have it set up for. Uh, one of the things I didn't show was the horn section sound. So that uses the pitch factor and the C4. And it, the C4 is not playing a transposed pitch. It's actually an octave up uh, saw wave that's filtered, which kind of gets a little more like that brass sound on top. Because when you have a saxophone sound that's transposed up an octave, it sounds kind of wonky. So the C4 takes care of the upper octave, while the pitch factor takes care of the lower octave. So you have these, you know, three octaves in parallel lines, which help make it sound like a bigger horn section. <laughs> So that's my board. That's what it is. I've gone through a lot of different pedals. I've tried a lot of different things. Uh, this setup is what works well for me. Um, if you have any questions about the pedals, uh, I'm happy to answer them. You can just send me a message and I'll get back to you. I've tried a few different things, um, but this is based on size. I don't want a board that's any bigger than this uh, based on weight, right? Because it can be a, a pain to lug this around sometimes. So uh, for the size, for the weight, for the functionality that I get, this is the setup that works for me. Um, I always leave that delay on again. I always leave the reverb on. 
Um, I usually tweak them depending on what the venue is like. So again, any questions, send me a message. Otherwise, thanks for taking the tour and uh, good luck with your own horn pedals and your own horn setups.